I wish to adopt the protocol that has been established, recognizing certain persons of high office, quite rightly, and I share that recognition. But I also want to greet you, brothers and sisters. Amen. I am pleased to congratulate the pastor and members of the Antioch Baptist Church for organizing this timely and important centennial celebration of the birth of an icon, yeah. a legend in our time, yeah. Bishop Dr. William Connor. I'm at this age now when I don't have a great enthusiasm for attending events or for going to, I can happily miss anything. But if Pastor Connor had made the mistake of not remembering to invite me to this event, he would have had a serious, serious problem with me. Amen, amen. I'm glad he talked about the conversations that he would see, but not hear. <laughs> I knew then Mr. Connor when I was six years old and just started to attend the Bastia Boys School under the tutelage of the also legendary Mr. Beach. Mr. Connor was the sexton of the St. George's Anglican Church. He was a tall, and imposing figure. And I, like many of the pupils of the boys' school and the girls' school, stood in awe of him. <laughs> the Anglican churchyard was a thoroughfare between Caon Street and the elementary schools. In practice, though, it was a very orderly thoroughfare because the sexton, Mr. Connor, made it so. He seemed to be always present, even when we did not see him at first. He would suddenly appear and ensure that everyone was well behaved. There was to be no chasing each other, no shouting, no fighting, no wandering among the tombstones. He would stand there and he would greet children as they passed, but he insisted on good behavior. As I grew older, I admired Mr. Connor, more so when I heard adults say that he wanted to be a priest. It used to be said that he knew all of the various services, baptism, etc., by heart. But in those days, there was no pathway for a poor black man in St. Kitts to become an Anglican priest. Eventually, Mr. Connor did not just become a priest, he became a bishop. <laughs> William Connor was a man of God. He was called and he answered. And he answered with full commitment. The institution of Sunday school is a significant part of his enduring legacy. Pastor Connor did not start Sunday school in St. Kitts. He, like me, grew up at a time when attending at least two Sunday schools was the norm rather than the exception. In addition, some of us attended two Sunday schools plus Bible class on Tuesday afternoon and 6 a.m. Wednesday morning children's service at the Methodist Church. Eventually, though, the country went through a period in which Sunday school went into decline. Attendance was fail falling. In some cases, because of a variety of secular distractions, but mainly because parents had become lax and were not insisting on sending their children to Sunday school. Pastor William Connor went on a one-man crusade to bring back Sunday school 
and he would not be denied. The Unity Lodge assisted by allowing him to use their building on Wrigley Avenue. He did not sit back and hope that the children would come to Sunday school. He got an old bus, put a loudspeaker on it, and he drove through and through the town on Sunday afternoon calling out, Mammy, send out the children for Sunday school. He expanded his, his reach, the length and breadth of St. Kitts. He even started Sunday school under a cock and hen tree in James Street. The sophisticated would call it a flamboyant or poinciana. <laughs> the resurgence of Sunday school is a significant aspect of his enduring legacy. Anytime Sunday school, the words Sunday school come into my mind for any reason, I think of Pastor Connor. Can you imagine the number of children in our federation and around the world who have become good, God-fearing citizens because Pastor Connor lived according to Christ's teaching to suffer the little children to come unto me for of, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Here we are. A hundred years after he was born, celebrating the life of Bishop William Connor, who I refer to simply as a child of God. What is his legacy? What has he left behind? The Sunday school was just the beginning. His pioneering work in establishing the Baptist movement that eventually expanded throughout St. Kitts and Nevis yeah. is the other hallmark of his legacy. Mm -hmm. He is the only citizen of St. Kitts and Nevis I know to have successfully created a Christian movement that spread nationwide. <laughs> the other established movements, like the Methodists, Anglican, Catholic, and Moravian, were imported by Europeans. He proved, Pastor Connor proved, that a Kittishan, a black man, a man of humble beginnings, could also have the vision, the ability, and the drive That's right. to mobilize the means That's and right. resources yeah. to create a national religious movement. Amen. Amen. That's right. It is even more significant when we recognize that the, that movement is almost 60 years old now, mm. and it has spread in so many quarters, saved so many lives, mm -hmm. contributed to the communities in which the followers have served, nurtured thousands of nationals who today live productive lives Amen. in our society and abroad. It was entirely appropriate when my administration recognized his service to the children of our nation by naming in his honor the Dr. William Connor Primary School. <laughs> which is located just across the street from his original Pastor Connor Sunday School. We also recommended him for the award of the OBE, which Her Majesty was pleased to grant to him. As we stood on the threshold of our nation's independence and planned for a prayerful but joyful celebration to which the world was invited, there could be no other to deliver the exhortation at the birth of our nation but this humble, That's right. but this humble, devout, determined, visionary sexton who built a church and became a bishop. Mm -hmm. 
I think that the teachings of Jesus Christ provide us with the best context for such a determination. Quite recently, I was reading a commentary by a religious writer named John Bloom. I will try very briefly to summarize the essence of it. He asks the question, what did Jesus leave behind? Mm. He be began by pointing out a lot of things that Jesus did not leave behind, mm. including no house, no money, no business, no buildings, etc. He concluded by reminding us that these things and every earthly thing we cherish will pass away. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Except for Jesus' word and his church. Amen. These were Jesus' priorities and legacy. Jesus, in his own words, tells us, heaven and earth will pass away, Amen. but my words will not pass away. Among his words were the following, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That is an enduring memory I have of Pastor William Connor. Is this how you remember Pastor Connor? Think about it. Jesus also said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. An enduring legacy of Bishop William Connor hmm. is the church he built. Amen. I don't mean the building. I mean you, all of you. Yes, that's right. I mean the great Baptist movement, right. yes, which he right. pioneered in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Pastor Connor, some of the times when you see us talking, we were talking about Antioch Baptist Church, you know. <laughs> when Pastor Connor was building the original Antioch Baptist Church, he was in my office quite frequently, and we met and we spoke on different occasions. And Pastor Connor knew that he only had to say what he wanted, and um, he would have. He wants stone from the quarry, he gets stone from the quarry. That was how it was, and I make no apologies for that. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I hope that all of you are aware that the original Antioch Baptist Church was built by Mr. Eldon Jones, the older brother of your pastor, of your pastor, Kelvin Jones. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Eldon Jones was a classmate of mine. So you see, there was a kind of linking up in those days. For me, an outstanding legacy, an outstanding aspect of his legacy is the great leadership he nurtured and inspired to carry on the work. Amen. Bishop Connor's legacy lives on Amen. in the dedicated, selfless, and inspiring leadership of Pastor Kelvin Jones, Amen. Pastor Calvin Hazel, Antioch's own Pastor Lincoln Connor. And many of you are not going to know this one. And Pastor Riddell Blake. The latter may not be well known to many of you because he's abroad serving in another vineyard. But he was a very articulate young man who served with Bishop Connor at Antioch in the early days. Amen. His brother was delivered a most moving poem this evening. You deserve our congratulations, our commendation, and our gratitude for organizing this highly significant memorial to this humble, devoted servant of God whose light continues to shine brightly in the Federation of St. Kitts right. and Nevis. Right. 
as you build upon his legacy. You must let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Pastor, Bishop, Dr. William Connor did just that. Mm. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.